And so my reaction to this responsibility and to this opportunity is a very mixed one. But above all else, it is an acute awareness of the work we have to do to build a peace, to heal our country, to make a society such as ours work is not easy. It means learning to live with, to understand, and to respect many different kinds of human beings of different colors, of different races, of different national origins, of different cultural levels, of different tastes and intellectual capacities, of different educational attainments, of different social backgrounds, personalities, and dispositions, and to accept them all as equals. It means learning to trust each other, to work with each other, to think of each other as neighbors. It means diminishing our prerogatives by as much as is necessary to give others the same prerogatives. It means respect for the rule of law as a dispenser of justice as well as a maintainer of order. It means giving all citizens an equal opportunity to participate in American life and in the policy-making processes of our society. And in all frankness, our society has not worked in this way up to now. There are risks in such a society because there is evil as well as good. There is meanness, as well as generosity. There is dishonesty, as well as honesty. And there is violence, as well as peace. But these are risks we must take. There are those who believe that a society of this kind cannot work. To put their doubts in perspective, let us not forget that when we began this experiment in government, we did not instantly achieve an equal chance for every member of our society. But we did promise to work toward it. We made that promise because we believe that when men, however different, are free to grow, they will enlarge their intellectual and spiritual powers. They will achieve more satisfying lives for themselves. They will become better neighbors to others and they will make possible a more enlightened and a more civilized society. The practice of freedom since that time has made possible tremendous advances in the lives of the average citizen of our country. But ironically, those very advances have highlighted our shortcomings shortcomings which have denied hope for improvement to too many Americans, shortcomings 
which have concealed the reality of hunger, poverty, and deprivation for many under an illusion of prosperity and equality for all. We have learned painfully at times that freedom does not automatically correct the inequities, the injustices, and the human failings of any society. Freedom does not automatically create concern, understanding, and compassion in all citizens. And so we have learned that freedom does not work unless we work at it. And let me say to you, my fellow Democrats, that in this election year, we must surpass all our previous efforts, not so much for the success of our party, but for the survival of liberty in our country. And I might close by suggesting as a standard the words of a voice from an ancient democracy in Greece. The words were these. We are capable at the same time of taking risks and of estimating them beforehand. Others are brave out of ignorance. When they stop to think, they begin to fear. But the man who can most truly be accounted brave is he who best knows the meaning of what is sweet in life and of what is terrible, then goes out undeterred to meet what is to come. And so, my fellow Americans, let us make certain that we know the difference between what is sweet in life and what is terrible, and that we then go out undeterred to meet what is to come. It is in this spirit that I accept your nomination and will try to justify it.